Happy 4th of July, St. Matthew. So good to be with all of you virtually on this Sunday. Today for our small virtual worship service, we are going to have scripture. We're going to have uh, Pastor David is going to be preaching and we'll have some prayers as well. You are also invited to join the congregation for a Zoom fellowship time at 1030 this morning and you'll find the link right here in the chat. We are in a time of Sabbath this Sunday and we're not having in-person worship services because our staff is hard at work learning new technology like here in the sanctuary with new cameras that will soon be streaming right to Facebook but also to our website. So we are learning angles and OBS and of the best way for us to continue to offer worship for those who are not yet comfortable to come in person. So know that we love you, our prayers are with you, and we begin this worship as we begin every day of our life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who loves us all. Amen. I rest in you, O oh God. I am in your safekeeping, body and soul held in peace. My heart cries out to you, my God. All that upsets me, you see. All that disturbs me, you understand. Only here, in your presence, Am I fully known? I am wrapped in grace. I rest in you, O God. I am in your safekeeping. Body and soul held in peace. I try to relax, but anger rattles me. I try to relax, but my feelings niggle at me. Be still. Be silent. Put your trust in the Lord. I rest in you, O oh God. I am in your safekeeping. Body and soul held. In the stillness, the light of your face shines. My heart turns to thankfulness and is glad. I have more than enough. You, Lord, are more than enough. I lie down to sleep, safe and sound. I rest in you, O oh God. I am in your safekeeping, body and soul held in peace. Be still and rest. You are held in peace. from Mark chapter 6. Jesus left that place and came to his own hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter? the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two. 
and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey, except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the good news, the gospel of our Lord. From the God at the boundaries of our knowing and relating, and who is calling us into more expansive places of God's kingdom through his spirit, grace, mercy, and peace to you. From Jesus Christ, our sibling and center. Amen. Well, St. Matthews, it is good to be here. I wish I could be seeing you in person, um, but I appreciate the opportunity to share with you God's word today. I long to travel. I long to get out and to see the world as has been one of my loves for a long time. Do you remember those days? COVID, of course, has shut down a lot of that for us, but now with COVID starting to open, many of us are traveling. And I want you to remember and think about a time where you traveled somewhere, not just for a weekend getaway, but somewhere completely different from where you grew up. Um, some kind of a trip, two weeks, three weeks, a long trip that um, where you were there, when you were there, you were experiencing such radically different uh, people and place, uh, food. Uh, what was that environment like? And when you spent time in that experience, when it was done and as you were on your way home, you come home and you begin to share your experience. I remember one of my experiences that it were probably one of the most powerful uh, trips that I've ever had was really during my time in college. I share this often and have uh, uh, thoughts of this uh, time when I was in Brazil. I had a friend who uh, invited me to spend some time with him and uh, because time afforded me such, I was able to be there for two and a half months. And I remember going and being immersed into a culture in a place that was so different than what I had grown up. And I was so confronted by this difference in the sense of how stark and, and uh, uh, strange it was to me, frankly. The food, uh, the language, because I didn't speak Portuguese. And, uh, you know, homesick the first couple weeks. But after that, man, I felt like I just got immersed in that culture. And uh, there were a number of beaches that we went to. And I feel like I just kind of became Brazilian in some way. And I just really got immersed into the, the culture and the way of the people. and. Um, and I remember distinctly coming back and showing up in the first couple weeks, everything back home seemed strange to me. And, and, and what I want to wonder about is that return back. When we go off on a journey and then we come back to a place, we return changed. And that, that change isn't something necessarily that we can even relate to the people who we're sharing their stories with. They hear the stories, but they can't get inside of the experience that we've had. And I think about Jesus in today's gospel lesson, that he's returning home, going to his hometown. And if you were to read all of the texts prior to chapter six in the gospel of uh, Mark here, you see that Jesus's journey is actually being found among the people who are kind of the marginalized in society, those who are, are sick and unclean, those who within the, the tradition uh, might not be accepted or embraced. And yet Jesus is spending time among them. And what's peculiar about that and important is that, that, that Jesus is the one who is inaugurating the kingdom of God. He's the one who's bringing awareness to where and with whom the kingdom of God is present in the world. And so in light of all that experience over these chapters and interactions, he's now coming back home and he's being met with suspicion about who he is in that kind of sense of, well, who do you think you are? 
all like hoity-toity, who do you think you are, the son of God? And you maybe laugh at that, but when they say in the text, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, uh, those are not positive references. Uh, uh, the carpenter, kind of an ordinary person, the son of Mary, typically the association or the reference would be the son of the father, not of the mother. And so they're not identifying Jesus in the most positive light. And yet Jesus is coming back changed. And he's coming back uh, to a people who aren't fully able to embrace the totality of the world that he's both been in, but that he's inviting uh, the hometown to begin to see and to be opened up to themselves. And so the two parts of our text, Jesus comes home, he has this interaction with his hometown and this sense of resistance, but it's contrasted with the sending of the 12 and the 12 of the disciples, of course. But the contrast is interesting because it talks about him calling the 12 and sending the 12. That sometimes in our hometown, in the places that are familiar to us, we're not able to see or to understand the profound impact of what the kingdom of God looks like beyond the borders of our knowing, beyond the things that are familiar to us and are relating. But that's exactly where the kingdom is born, is encountered. The kingdom of God, life in this world as if God were in charge. It's not just something that happens interior to who I am as an experience of God. It's something that happens between us and among us. And so the calling of the disciples and the sending them out to be present in the world, to bring a word to the world of God's promise and presence and God's love, but then to bring healing to others. That is an important presence to hold on to. And that's what Jesus is sending his disciples into. And he goes on to say, he ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, to take no bag, no bread, uh, no money in their belts, when he says take nothing, I mean, think about the journey where we go on these long trips, right? We, we build lists, we were prepared, we're like sometimes worried on the way to the airport that we might not have packed enough or the right things and we might get to our destination without the things that we needed to have. But to take nothing for your journey is a reference to, for Jesus to say to his disciples, what are you depending on as you move out into the world? to be present for the kingdom of God? Is it, is it your own stuff or is it something else? Are you able to release it, be open to the thing of another and where God is meeting you? Because sometimes the things that we have preoccupy our attention and we're not always able to be present in our attention for who the other is and who they are as they're coming to us. And that's a different kind of posture and I think about that shift as an important shift from what I call from, from the, the threshold of familiarity to the place uh, that is strange and different. And that movement across the threshold, the threshold being kind of, you know, the, the metaphor is the threshold of the home. The place at the front door where we move from the, the place that we, we know and we can depend on to the place out in the world where we're actually being open to hospitality and the hospitality maybe of others, not just what we offer others. And that's an important shift in this text. And that's what's going on consistently with Jesus. Well, I see this among us too, as a community of faith. I think that St. Matthew's has really been living into this kind of receiving hospitality from strangers. Right? You've always been a community that wants to create warmth and community for others. But there's also a reversal of hospitality. It's not just us who are being hospitable. It's other people who are being hospitable and inviting us into their worlds. And that shift is really important. So, for example, Sustainable Renton, as one example of many, we didn't invite them into our world. Sustainable Renton came and extended themselves to a number of different communities of faith and said, hey, who would want to partner with us? And so St. Matthew said, yeah, we'd love to do that. And we were invited into their world and opened up the space for their world 
to be unpacked before us. And we're participating with them as they feed people. But it's not just the feeding of people, right? It's the relating of people beyond the boundary of our knowing. It's actually being in conversation with people from our neighborhood, from youth who are showing up to do their service hours and making connections with a variety of beautiful people. That's the reverse hospitality that's happening. And so I think what Jesus is asking us to do is to have some sense of awareness that we are called and sent to those kind of places that as we're in conversation with other people, we can hear the, the, the sense of loss, the place where people are, are really alone and, and alienated in the world. And we can be a companion uh, of trust and presence, being for them the presence of the Holy Spirit. Where is that for you? Where is God in the midst of your week calling you to be present, calling you beyond the boundary of your knowing, beyond the boundary of your comfort zone, to move across the threshold to somehow be encountered and gifted with the presence of God and the hospitality that comes through strangers? Where is that for you in your life? What is God inviting you into? Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the ways that you open up our world. You open us up to your world, inviting us, calling us, and sending us. We pray that you would uh, open up our mind and our heart to seeing who is before us as an invitation to receive hospitality from them. Um, we thank you for these places and the gifts of, of, of what you're up to. Thank you for sustainable Renton and for all the opportunities that you have yet to open up to us. Keep us mindful and aware as you lead us forward. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let us dwell in the presence of our abundantly loving and rest-giving God during this time of prayer. God of creation, we pray for your earth Protect the natural beauty in our national and local parks and forests, and guide the decisions of all who care for and work on the land. God of righteousness, we pray for the nations. Bestow your peace throughout the world. Raise up prophets to speak truth to power. Uphold those who work for human rights and protect the poor and the refugee. On this 4th of July, we ask that you bless the United States, free us from prejudices, and grant to our elected leaders a passion for justice and a will to serve all people. Protect from danger those who celebrate this day. God of compassion, we pray for the sick and suffering, for the victims of disasters, for all the indigenous peoples around the globe, for those deprived of their freedom, for those facing the Delta COVID contagion, and for those we name here before you. God of faithfulness, we pray for ourselves. Be with each of us on our many journeys and graciously receive our personal petitions at this time. God of eternal love, we thank you for all your saints, those who have served their nation and those who ministered beyond national boundaries. At the end of all things, bring us all into the kingdom of your presence. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend ourselves, our nation, and all for whom we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we are gathered in many physical spaces and yet gathered together today through the Holy Spirit, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share the peace with one another. <laughs> peace be with you. <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. From out here in God's creation, peace be with you. 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 Receive this blessing. God, our parent, we rest in you. Jesus, the Son, we rest in you. Holy Spirit, we rest in you. Loving parent, for the things this day that bring us joy, we give you thanks. Healing Lord, for the things this day that bring us sorrow, give us peace. Spirit of life, in the remainder of this day, give us rest. May God be your protection and safe haven. May the power of Christ Jesus dwell in you. And may the Holy Spirit be your guide forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve all people. Thanks be to God. And we will see you next Sunday here for in-person worship at St. Matthew's. Peace be with you.